Monday, Olivier Benjamin and I uh, rented a panga and headed to Ciralvo in the hopes of shooting anything but Yellowtail. We started off at moderate depths at Snapper Alley. It's about 15 meters. The viz was low, the water was cold, and I mostly saw cabrillas like the one you see there. Here I move my head a lot. <laughs> so this is the only Kubera I'll see at uh, Pargo Alley. It's not huge, but it looked monstrous uh, in comparison with everything else. Uh, I, I have to be honest, I haven't seen a large Kubera in years, and they all have but disappeared, in my opinion. Uh, although I'm only there during the winter, maybe that's it. So after uh, Striper, Pargo Alley, not Striper Alley, I'm not Rhode Island, uh, we dove rocks at 90 and 100 feet. Uh, one of those rocks is called Brazil, if you know the area. Uh, we were expecting almacos and uh, maybe yellowtails, uh, but uh, we basically saw not much. So Johnny, our boat guy, suggested we go to El Viejo, and this is El Viejo. You know, some sand and some dirty rocks. I was not super impressed with the spot, but as I cursed Johnny, um, I sanded and grunted, and a barred pargo showed up. Out of nowhere. This made my day. I, I love Bart Pargo in the way they uh, come at you uh, when you waited for a long time. The wind picked up and I suggested we get back to the mainland. Uh, we weren't having anything uh, back at Cerralbo anyway. Uh, and I knew where we could get, you know, some fish. So here's their surprise. Check out the visibility. I haven't seen clean water like this in Baja in the five years I've been here. I'm only around the winter again, but seriously, that's unheard of. And as I think this viz is pretty good, I see, <laughs> I see Benjamin about 100 yards from me. Is that crazy? And uh, please, someone explain to me what Benjamin is doing. He looks like he's trying to cruise mid-water. Benjamin, if you're trying to get to the bottom, that's not, you know, the fastest way. <laughs> Uh, that clean water is awesome until you have to shoot fish in it. Uh, here I'm looking at a 15-pound uh, cabrilla uh, that seems determined to stay at least 50 feet from me. Um, it's really not coming any closer. And, you know, I start uh, playing with my bands and doing my thing. And I, I managed to attract something, yeah, a trigger fish. Look at it, right on my right. It's going to show up soon. There it is. Look at that thing. It's like 10 pounds. I almost think about shooting it, but then it goes far too far away. Good thing I didn't because, as you can see, far away, there's a, a bard pargo swimming towards me. Look at it. Oops, oops. So bard pargo is coming. Here you see the lips. And I think I have the shot, and then it gets spooked. <laughs> and now, even with the 150, I'm not going to shoot that far in the rocks. So, enough with the uh, <laughs> empty water. Look at this school of Pargo. I'm looking for a large one, you know, something in the 40 pounds or something. These are not, you know, they're big, but they're not huge. And I'm having difficulty choosing one, so I take this insane shot on a... <laughs> Average size one. Go figure. I'm I'm very, very proud of that shot. I mean, I miss stuff that's so easy, and then I get those incredible shots. I don't know how my brain works. Here's Johnny. Right after that fish, I see a uh, marlin <laughs> right next to Benjamin. So I take them at 150 and, um, you know, I continue fishing. I really do not want any more Kuberas. Not Kuberas of the size I just took, anyway. And sure enough, look at this. All the Kuberas are here. Again, not the same spot. There's nothing above 15, 20 pounds in there. But, you know, I'm curious. 
I follow them and I find that they all go into this small little hole. There's like 20 of them in there. Isn't that extraordinary?